Welcome to Intersections, where faith ideas and life meet. Today our topic is sacred journeys, and we're talking about pilgrimages. We know of many biblical characters who took pilgrimages. One is Moses, who went to the top of the mount, mountain and received the Ten Commandments. I took a journey once, actually several times, to the same place, a place called St. Andrew's Priory, where I spent time even in silence over a weekend um, and expected every time to come away, and I did, with some sort of spiritual experience. But is that a sacred journey? Is that a pilgrimage? Is that what we mean when we say pilgrimage? That is the topic of our program today. Welcome to it. Let's talk about other types of examples of pilgrimages. Has anyone taken one? Yes. As a Muslim, I have been on pilgrimage twice, mm -hmm. or the Hajj, <coughs> to Mecca, and specifically the Kaaba which is prescribed on Muslims once in their lifetime. And I think that would be considered a spiritual journey that gets you closer to God. How long was that, was, was those pilgrimages? The pilgrimage that I went on uh, lasted for approximately 10 days uh -huh. uh, that included all the different rites uh, and the preparation for getting to uh, Saudi Arabia from here in Southern California. It's interesting looking at pilgrimages. When, when I think of pilgrimage, I'm thinking that, okay, I'm going to bundle up and go somewhere and spend some you know, quiet time. But Roy, you were talking earlier about other types of pilgrimages too, which kind of intrigue me. Well, it seems to me that there's some pilgrimages that we go on mm. and we don't realize that we have moved from some sort of ordinary life to a high moment where we feel the presence of God. We don't see the significance of it until afterwards. And then we say, we were on a pilgrimage to that sense of awareness and so on. But Could you give me an example of that? Because I'm not quite sure what you mean. Well, um, I think that people, when they are maturing and growing up, they don't decide they're going to go on a spiritual pilgrimage. But as a matter of fact, as they look back, they realize they were joining their friends, but they went to junior camp and something happened there. Or you go to school, mm. and you didn't expect that this would be a pilgrimage. But as you look back, you realize, my goodness, there were these class mm. periods where in the presence of this teacher, I got a sense and a glimpse of the meaning of life. So what, how would that be a pilgrimage mm. then? What, how, how would that be defined? Well, it's a movement of a person uh, towards a greater sense of meaning. But the part that doesn't sound like a pilgrimage mm -hmm. is that the, what I'm describing, the person doesn't decide at the beginning, I'm going to intentionally go on this mm -hmm. pilgrimage and search. Mm -hmm. All I'm saying is I think the word pilgrimage encompasses that. You know, I mean, the children of Israel, they were mm -hmm. escaping from Egypt. It's only later that they realized they were a pilgrimage to the wilderness to meet God and then from there to the promised land and they saw it all as a great event and pilgrimage but they didn't intend at the beginning to meet God in the desert. That makes uh, sense to me, uh, to, to, an, to my Adventist mind uh, in the sense that I'm used to thinking of pilgrimages as taking place over a certain course of time oftentimes long period of time, such as what we read in Pilgrim's Progress. Yeah. It's a lifelong journey to heaven. Uh, and I'm not so used to talking about pilgrimages as in, as in going, to, going on a Hajj or going to a spe specific location for a brief period of time, uh, because I'm not really used to hearing it in a religious context, uh, that kind of a pilgrim pilgrimage. I'm much more comfortable with the kind of pilgrimage that you're talking about Although I sometimes wonder, am I lacking something by not having these specific intentional journeys? Well, now you talked about a journey that you went on. Mm -hmm. Would, uh... Yeah, I did go on a pilgrimage of a sort, and I use that, I say of a sort because I'm not quite sure, at least I wasn't sure at that time if this was really a pilgrimage, but I did go on a couple of tours or trips to Adventist uh, historic sites in New England and also in Michigan. And also, when I used to live in the Napa Valley, I would frequently visit uh, the last home of Ellen White, uh, who is uh, one of the founders of the Adventist Church, as you know. And 
it wasn't just a visit. We, uh, a group of us went especially to New England and to Battle Creek uh, deliberately to really recount some of the Adventist history and also uh, draw intentionally, deliberately spiritual meaning out of it. So I think that would be something that's closest to making a specific trip over a short period of time for a spiritual purpose. So you're, look, you're looking at roots by the sound of it. Yeah, roots, something, the connection to history, something important happened. Could there be a danger, happened. though, when people do that, that they go there and think, well, this is where we know that, according to our tradition, God was there, and um, as such, this person's blessed of God. Is there a danger sometimes of losing sight of God when you go to these places and just think this place is holy? I think that's very possible. <clears throat> I know in... in uh, performing the Hajj or the Umrah, which is also the lesser pilgrimage, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes that does happen, uh, that people will go on these trips and will create or give more meaning to a particular building or a particular rock or a particular mm -hmm. area uh, as having some power that it really doesn't, uh, whereas the primary goal yeah. of the pilgrimage mm -hmm. is to have an encounter or get closer to God. Mm -hmm. Years ago, I was down in the south of France, and um, Lourdes, which is a very well-known site to a lot of our Catholic friends for pilgrimages, go there. And I went there, and I, I looked at the grotto, I looked at different places, and it seemed to me that the people who went there were spiritually prepared. Mm -hmm. Being not of the Catholic faith, I didn't go with that mindset. I went, well, as a tourist. But I saw some people kissing statues and I could not identify with that. There's a hygiene aspect of it too that I was thinking about. <laughs> but um, you know, get, getting down to it, you know, do, do we as, um, is there a danger in spiritual journeys to lose sight of the, what the journey is about and get caught up in the relics of the journey? Oh, sometimes I think we don't value them enough hmm. in our tradition. Because I know when I went to the St. Andrew's Priory, hmm. I prepared just in a different way. I prepared what I was going to wear, I prepared mm -hmm. my mind, I prepared my heart, mm -hmm. and and when I got there, it it had a I had a I felt like I had an amazing spiritual experience that comes when you just are quiet for more time than you would like in a way mm -hmm. things come into your mind and your heart that you wouldn't have thought of otherwise. Mm -hmm. And I had the opposite feeling, Lee, mm -hmm. not that there was a danger in doing it, it's the feeling mm -hmm. like, why don't I do this more? And you, you mentioned that in our tradition we don't value pilgrimages enough, right? I haven't. Well, but, okay. Yeah, sure. I, I and so that, just, yeah. Mm -hmm. But it seems to me that if we understand mm -hmm. some of our uh, distinctive Adventist um, experiences, we can feel that we, we do go on a pilgrimage. Um, because there's the life of the six days of work, of service to humanity, but it is a pilgrimage to the seventh day where we expect to meet God. Now, I do think that we're more likely to do it if we realize that that is a part of our experience and that's part mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. how we understand our relationship to God. And I would think that on a Sabbath then, you either do something where you are resting or you're silent, or you go uh, as the pilgrims do, thousands of them, you go to worship in the sanctuary. So a weekly pilgrimage. Yes. Okay, yeah. I'd just like to throw this out then to Shemel. Mm. Given the fact that you all take pilgrimages and you also have a sacred day, Yes. what, what do you think about what Roy just said? Would that... I think it's very applicable. Mm. I agree with you completely in that the preparation for the trip is also important. Uh, mm that would differ from the pilgrimage right. that you talked about where you go and then you don't realize it till you come back but uh, 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 the pilgrimage in the strictest sense or stricter sense does need to involve I think some kind of preparation uh, you're putting aside your daily affairs uh, cleansing yourself wearing nicer clothing you're getting ready to get closer to God and for uh, the Muslim faith uh, we do have a day of the week uh, that is holy the Friday uh, and the Friday prayer and you are required to go to the mosque and pray in uh, community with others and I think that's part of it too is to be yeah. for some type of pilgrimage not a personal pilgrimage to mm -hmm. Lord or to mm -hmm. the Priory where you're going on your own but 
this gathering, uh, being with others, uh, sharing the, uh, the joy of becoming closer to God, I think that's part of it as well. The well, question, think, go ahead. No, please. <laughs> so the question that comes to my mind right now is, uh, I think we all recognize here among the five of us that there is sacred time. But is there such a thing as objectively sacred place that we identify, uh, we can invest meaning and make it sacred, sacred personally or You mean like a church? whether it's church or a particular location, say Jerusalem, that many people consider to be a holy city still today, or holy land we, we speak of. And, uh, but for those of us who are Protestant Christians, uh, we tend to make it more abstract. But then I, you know, I wonder, can I, and I, I haven't really bought into the idea of anywhere being sacred in terms of place, location. Mm -hmm. But I do wonder, you know, is that something that we need to think about or reclaim, or maybe we've rightly gone away from the notion of sacred space because of the dangers of idolatry. One place that I think you can count on not being sacred is an intersection. Like where right here? Right, where, where you've got busy things <laughs> going on back and forth. Oh, mm. now Roy, I would... You, you think this program's holy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, here the inner sanctum right now. I'm just, <laughs> did you mean here or the idea of an intersection? I mean the idea of an intersection. I don't think that that's a place where you go uh, anticipating that you're going to have a spiritual experience. Um, when I say intersection, I'm talking about highways, big highways. Oh, oh, oh. I don't know. I might differ with that yeah. because uh, in the Hajj, for example, uh, there are different uh, times and different rites that you perform over this 10-day period. And some Two of the three million people. Exactly. Some of the busiest are when you are... Uh, going around the Kaaba uh, with hundreds of thousands of people at the same time and uh, during this time of going around your main prayer is supposed to be oh God please give me good in this life and in the hereafter and protect me from hellfire and so to be walking even though it is incredibly chaotic and you're being pushed and shoved to be walking with others with everyone kind of saying the same thing and seeing people crying as they're doing this because they're feeling close to God in this sacred place uh, that you, you, you could also be uh, close to God at a busy place. But there are other times when it's more for self-reflection, quiet, your own personal connection. The number of people for me doesn't make a difference. But for me, a highway intersection or an airport or I've been sometimes on Sabbath and wish that I wasn't. It's just not a place sure. there that's designed, nor do people intend to go there for spiritual experience. Mm. I think that the number of people that get into large cathedrals is a great part of worship. But I do think that a, a, a building that has been intentionally created to prepare people for a sense of the transcendent is more likely mm. to be a place where God uh, where people experience the presence of God. Yeah. I, I'm going to stick on, you know, come on. But what if, <laughs> what if the road to, <laughs> sorry. But the, what if the road to Damascus where Apostle Paul met Jesus was a busy intersection? Do you hear and do you see any stories in the, in the New Testament where people went back to that spot to try to find uh, well, Paul's what would, experience? What, what would prevent us from doing so? Because I don't think we worship a little highway spot. Okay, well, well, I mean, uh, the Muslim, Muslims are not worshipping Mecca, but it is a place that draws a... What's what happening I'm here? saying is there's no stories about that well, in the New Testament. But what's happening here is we're trying to define what we mean by pilgrimage. Yeah. Is it a place that one returns to? Is it a space or could it, can it be time? And we've also raised the issue of is it generally with people or can it be solitary? So it seems like we're playing with the definition. Well, what we're hanging on to is that it's a journey, and at the end of it, we have some sort of experience of God or the transcendent. A journey, though, either in time or space. Right. And at the end of it, so there's two characteristics, what I hear you saying. Right. It's a journey, right. and there's a spiritual experience at the end of it. Right. I'm not, and what I'm saying is that normally we think of a pilgrimage as something that we initiate or that we have willed. Mm -hmm. But even then, I think sometimes we look back and we say, We've been pulled mm. on, a, on a pilgrimage. Ellen White's initial vision, you don't get a sense, she prepared herself at the bottom of that incline, yeah. Yeah. you know, and then by George it worked. No, she's thrust up on okay, this Okay, let pilgrimage. me throw this out then. Could this be mm. a, a pilgrimage? I'm not 
I'll be interested in what you all say. Someone who's had some sort of trauma in their life and they're spending a lot of time and energy trying to get through it. And at the end of it, they've had a spiritual experience that involves the healing of that trauma. Is that a pilgrimage? In a broad sense, mm -hmm. I would say, yeah. Going back so. to it. Yeah. Yeah. As Pardon well, me? going back to it. For instance, sometimes there are events, some people can remember the time when they first felt they heard the voice of God mm -hmm. and they gave their heart to God. And it happened in this particular location. And they might go oh, back yeah. and, you know, just revisit that, not because the location is sacred, but it's sacred for them in terms of that's where they encounter God. Now, going back to the word, mm -hmm. your word and, and asking for a definition, I think the word pilgrimage can be used in a secular sense, but the way we're using it here, and in that experience, they would have had to have come not only to a sense of healing, but a sense of the healing because of God's presence. Or in relation to a new understanding of God or something. Right. Yeah. That's the way we're using it. So you're saying it. just mm -hmm. healing from the trauma psychologically wouldn't be considered a pilgrimage otherwise in the way it, we're talking. Otherwise, it's a journey and a meaningful one. But not a pilgrimage, okay. perhaps. Some people have sacred rooms in their houses, prayer rooms, where they go there on a daily basis, five or six in the morning, and spend quiet time there. And that room is set aside from other stuff. It's just where they pray. What do you think of that idea? Is that a sacred space? I'm not space? sure that's pilgrimage. Where you go there every day? Yeah, because but I think it? that... Right around from the bathroom. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> the bathroom could well, be our definition has gotten rather broad. It, it has, and, and yeah. I think... Well, I, don't, I don't know exactly where I'm going with this, but it doesn't feel like pilgrimage to me because it's, mm -hmm. it's too accessible. Uh, now... Oh, now we have another characteristic. It has to be someplace <laughs> yeah. that's a little not bit very, inaccessible. Well, I, I don't know, but you know, I, I recognize... Something that's not ordinary, I think. Yeah, yeah okay. Uh, something that... If you can do this... <laughs> I'm formulating as I, you know, I'm thinking just uh, maybe a half a second before I'm speaking, so this <laughs> is dangerous. But, uh, you know, I, I recognize that pilgrimage can result without intending and without uh, knowing. I, I recognize that. But I think for the most part, it mm -hmm. does need to be deliberate uh, to, to have meaning that apart from the usual uh, experience with the sacred or spiritual mm -hmm. journey or, you know, uh, as in life journey, you know, that. It seems to me that something needs to be deliberate. That okay, you, you, you how about the old-fashioned uh, camp meeting, the old-fashioned Methodist oh, yes. camp oh, meeting? Oh, As Shamal yes. was talking, I was thinking of Adventist camp meeting. Actually. So where you go for, was it 10 days or something, the camp meeting would be, and yeah. you'd go there on oh, a so Sunday? Week. Oh, it was a week, yeah. yeah. Sometimes yeah. two weeks. Sometimes two weeks, yeah. Sometimes yeah. Yeah. Two, two weekends. Two weekends, yeah. two weekends okay. that's yeah. right, yeah. So you'd go there, you'd prepare before you went there, you get all your possessions together, you'd live simply, you go in a group of people, yeah. or you're with yeah. a group of people. And then you'd worship. It can be. It can be. Yeah. I think mm. we're maybe talking about different degrees of pilgrimage, right. that they're going mm. to your holy place in the house. That could be considered a, a minor pilgrimage, so to speak, that you're taking some time away from your busy, busy day and just going for five minutes or ten minutes to pray. Uh, and there is some comfort mm. in going to a specific mm -hmm. place at all times. But then if you're preparing to go uh, for an afternoon to the Priory or for a couple of days, it's going to take more preparation. And I think, and I'm saying this carefully, it has potential to be more meaningful, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Potential. Yes. Because someone may go, and this happens, could go on Hajj and is lying, stealing, cheating, cursing, and now his Hajj is really meaningless. It yeah. did not bring him closer to God, even though he traveled thousands of miles. But going to the Priory, which is only a half hour drive away, uh, but was in the right frame of mind, had much more meaning and much more uh, closeness to God come as a result of that. Well, and isn't it true also that we're not talking about just arriving at the holy place, the room. We're talking mm. about the journey itself. Because mm. it seems like the word pilgrimage implies that the journey could change you as much as arriving Correct. at the place. Otherwise, we would mm -hmm. call it sa sacred arrival or something. You know, the pilgrimage mm -hmm. is is the process of going mm -hmm. from here to there, is it not? What do you do with Chaucer's uh, Canterbury Tales? That was a pilgrimage. It was a pilgrimage, but I'm just arguing about mm -hmm. the room, right. not to leave that, but mm -hmm. the, the journey is absent to right. some degree. But then years later, you come back to that place and you want to visit it. Oh. 
Well, that would that might be a be pilgrimage? True. Yeah. Okay. But sure. I was going to ask you, and I guess you already gave me an answer, but I, I'm not sure that I liked <laughs> your answer, which is. <laughs> Uh, Muslims pray several times a day, right? Correct, five times a day. And minimum. I was thinking, would that really, would those really count as pilgrimages? I, I was. I thinking, mean, for us, strictly, no, that's not yeah. a pilgrimage. But we have a, a strict definition and rite that's considered a mm -hmm. pilgrimage. Mm -hmm. But as a, a journey to get closer to God, yes, that is a brief journey. You're taking, I'm taking mm -hmm. my time out from a busy day in the hospital mm -hmm. uh, to go and pray wherever it is mm -hmm. that I happen to pray. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so that that is uh, a but small journey. But not a journey. pilgrimage. But maybe not necessarily a pilgrimage, I guess, as mm -hmm. in the broad sense of the word. Mm -hmm. Now we're back to confusion again. <laughs> well, we're talking about well, sacred spaces and then pilgrimages, and sometimes they link together and sometimes they don't, maybe. Yeah. So what do you suggest for people who are living their busy lives, uh, in modern living, urban living perhaps, mm -hmm. where we live, we seem to be always living near or at, at an intersection, so what, uh, how, what, what kind of suggestions do you have for busy people living today? Number one, get out of the intersection. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I think a simple one uh, for most people around mm -hmm. this table is actually go to a sanctuary and worship with other people mm -hmm. at least once a week. Mm -hmm. Is that asking to? I, I do think that that's mm -hmm. a, that can lead to a great state of renewal. Uh, and a sense of God's presence. Now, maybe uh, people who, ha who feel like that's an obligation mm -hmm. rather than a pilgrimage uh, can't, can't experience the presence of God. But if we talked about it less in the language of obligation and more in the language of pilgrimage mm -hmm. and even adventure, mm -hmm. because we mm -hmm. don't know quite what's going to happen on Sabbath if we're lucky, mm -hmm. maybe people would have a better chance of mm -hmm. experiencing God. How did you end up going to the Priory? Uh, how did you choose that? Maybe we can learn something from the way you chose that place. I, I was just thinking that, Julius. That I hadn't thought in terms of pilgrimage, but the thing I thought in terms of is getting away from the things I do. Mm, day -day. I, yeah, and that's what, just in sitting here, and I, I don't think I felt that before we did this program here, that it maybe isn't the, the consistent thing, that it's something for me, I'm thinking it might be a little bit out of the ordinary so that the journey itself becomes exciting. You know, I plan food, I plan clothes, I plan the drive there and whether I'm going to take anybody with me or a bike so that that journey itself. So the way I came to choose it is that I said I want to get away, some distance away, and I want it to be something that's out of the ordinary so that I'm already describing or saying my definition a little bit there. Mm -hmm. And I think the, the mm -hmm. further away it is and the more you prepare, perhaps, you'll drop more of the day-to-day -day routine as you're getting there. So mm -hmm. if it takes a few minutes, you can downgrade a little bit. You know how it takes two, three days of your vacation mm -hmm. starting mm -hmm. to finally relax yes. and get into it and then you have to come back. Yeah. So the preparation, uh, the distance may help you to lose more of the baggage of the routine mundane. Now is it too um, reduced, is the word pilgrimage too reduced if we talk to upwardly mobile people who have money to go overseas or distant places for their vacations, if they include in it a visit to some place where they feel that they might encounter the presence of God. Hmm. Now, Maybe they do other things, but why not include that? Mm -hmm. And then oh, remember absolutely. that after, when yeah. they come home. Well, that's a great, I love that idea, actually. Yeah. 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 That I is do. actually, that's actually one it. of my habits with my family. Uh, whenever we go anywhere, uh, Barcelona, Kenya, whatever, uh, uh, if it doesn't happen to be on Friday or the Sabbath, for example, uh, I make it a point of trying to find the local mosque and going and just saying a prayer there. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. as remembering God mm -hmm. during your trip, thanking Him mm -hmm. for being able to go on the trip and for your health and all the other reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, and if it is Friday, uh, to actually make the effort to find a mosque and, mm -hmm. and go pray Friday prayer on, on your vacation. I have three places that are very important for me and uh, I, the, among those, one place I haven't gone back to, but the other two places are, one is the place of my father's upbringing there's actually a mountain that uh, I will eventually own because I'm the firstborn and I won't get into the whole story, but 
there I've been maybe two or three times in my life where all my ancestors are, ancestors are buried. Mm. Now it's nothing necessarily religious, but it is a point of reference for me and I want to go back and it does have a s spiritual meaning in the sense that I'm thankful for the life that I've been given. So thinking of a place where we can draw a very important meaning from, I, I would really uh, value and I would suggest. The other place is uh, there's a um, place where I lost a friend uh, in a canoeing accident. And it was a very traumatic experience where I questioned that I was pastoring, uh, youth pastoring, uh, and I questioned God a lot at, at the shore there. I, I, and I, you know, I still get emotional thinking about it. So a place, even if it's not an uplifting place, a place where we have struggled with God, uh, that would be an important place that we might think about. And, and the third place is where I had a turning point experience that, that was in Paris. And there was, I was sort of an accidental pilgrim in the sense that you talked about earlier, where I didn't go there to make a pilgrimage, but a place and where I found God. I haven't that. returned to that place yet, that very room where mm -hmm. I had a turning point experience. But uh, thinking about where we've met God, and investing meaning in those places mm -hmm. perhaps might be another way of uh, creating pilgrimage mm -hmm. for ourselves. Mm -hmm. So you're recommending... Yeah, as, as possibilities, not, not necessarily an absolute one, but these are ways that we can invest meaning and create pilgrimages for ourselves. Which I think we've all mentioned, mm -hmm. the absolute importance of being on a pilgrimage at some point or uh, frequently. I'd like to just mention one that broadens the term pilgrimage out, and so it might not fit, but let me just say, and that is that um, scholars and academics in religion see themselves on a pilgrimage, and they really are dedicated mm. to finding God in that way. Mm. That is so interesting, because when we look at the old hymn, I'm a pilgrim, and I'm a stranger. I'm a stranger. This world is not my home, I'm just a passing through. Hmm. So from those of us who are believers, it gives us a sense that we are headed somewhere and that eventually we will meet God and that journey is a pilgrimage mm -hmm. as we go through life. You've been watching Intersections where faith, ideas and life meet.